Hi everyone, Ben here. I'd just like to take a moment to thank some of our patrons. C. Prince Julian, Phoebe Siders, Aidan King, Francisco Pargana, Victoriano Velo. Thank you all. We really appreciate your support. If you'd like to join them, go to www.patreon.com forward slash Rusty Quill and take a look at our rewards. to episode 71 of the Rusty Quill Gaming Podcast. I'm your host and GM, Alex Newell. With me today, I have... James, uncomfortably warm, Ross. Bryn, melting slightly, Monroe. Lydia's too hot. It's <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> who am I? I forgot. I don't know. And who are you playing? Sir Bertrand McGuffigan. Hamid Salah Haroon al Sasha Rackett. Resort Drick Act Amsterdam. Because it may be 60 degrees in here, but your characters are nice, comfortable Centigrade, not Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> Send help. Send <laughs> 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 I see help. I feel like I'm in a shipping container in Romania about to be questioned about what I know by oh, people God. with diplomatic deniability. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. And yes, so picking up where we left off, we are in Prague. You have discovered a minor zombie problem, which you dealt with quite effectively, actually, which was uh, popping up from beneath the city as you're continuing your investigation into the simulacrum, specifically trying to like track down who made it and the things sim- like that. The simulacrum? What from? Yeah, it's been a while. You were all heading into the university, and after a brief spate where Bertie just managed to like push a couple of students to break down territory, um, you all... Cool, managed... Hammond put them back together. <laughs> Via the study of... Franz Kafka, while you were with Einstein, you ended up having to go to, I say having, going to a meeting with basically the deans and the university council, whereupon they uh, started this conversation and then it became pretty apparent to you guys that they were probably Harlequins, given the whole ring reveal thing. They did say we're definitely Harlequins. So with that in mind, they have just thrown their rings into the table. Everyone give me a perception check. Oh, natural 20 from Bertie. Uh, natural 1 from Grizzle. That's the wrong way round, guys. <laughs> yeah. Switch dice. All right, there you go. <laughs> and Bryn? Oh, I've got a natural 20. I'm, great. I've yeah. got a 1. <laughs> uh, I'm adding furiously. Um, 18. 18. Okay. So wait, mine at, at oh. 25 with the norm is still above Bertie's yeah. 10. However, because natural 20s matter... Yep. For once, Bertie, you're you're quickest on the uptake. Your experience of people trying to stop you leaving a room when massive debts are involved leads you to suspect that perhaps the way they're moving around the table, etc., might have a little bit more to do with uh, starting to cover exits now rather than merely, uh, you know, standing and stretching their legs. Sasha, you are close behind in that that summary. They haven't made any threats or movements or anything like that. But whilst uh, Curie is stood over the uh, rings and um, Einstein is still asleep, Sigmund definitely has sort of stood and is gently making his way to the entrance doors that you guys came in. Bertie stands up. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm certainly very sleepy. I've had a very long day. I think an early night would definitely be on the cards. I'll just be popping off. Uh, yeah, when, right. oh. I, th- I think we should all uh, consider. I think Bertie's got a good idea for once. Yeah, no, we were just... sleeping, sleepy, sleepy times. Yawn. Oh, I'm going to be climbing the wooden no, stairs. Wait, 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 at this point, Freud is now between you and the door. Has made no aggressive moves whatsoever. It was definitely a nonchalant walk. Definitely a nonchalant walk, but Ratchet nonetheless, he's now between them and the door. Spring loaded. <laughs> wait, Bertie. hang on a minute. Look, we're just about to get. Madam Curie, will you please tell us what's going on? I would, as soon as people would, you know, let me get a word in. We all finished? Freud sort of gives a, a, a lazy little hand gesture. Bertie's attempting to out-nonchalant Freud. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the steps towards... Hmm. Steps towards I'm not sure what role that would be. Um, to out-nonchalant. Perform. Yeah, can we get perform nonchalance? All right. <laughs> uh, nine. Oh, oh, goodness me. Uh, I think I fear that Freud may have the edge on you on perform nonchalance. What's, what's Sigmund Freud going to perform? Like, perform psychoanalysis, perhaps? <laughs> Apart from that. Yeah, even, that pretty even, much a profession. Yeah, oh, yeah, good point. I'm, I'm afraid... Well, that, I mean, you know, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> if Freud's doing it. I'm afraid that Freud out-nonchalances you. 
Well, I don't think you're taking this very seriously. <laughs> anyway. But you're, you're, so Bertie's now standing up. And Bertie's standing up pretty close. Yeah. So Bertie's now, at this point, he's been out nonchalanted uh, by Freud. So Sasha is trying to be nonchalant and is standing with her back to Bertie, but I'm not even going to roll that because that would be a crit like character-wise, that's a cr she can't do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say that the time that this discussion has taken is the length of kind of awkwardness as Curie's kind of waiting to start hesitating. Like, are we, are we good? Can I, Everyone keeps we, looking over to Bertie good? and Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just a bit of an awkward moment. It's when Grizzop's just kind of standing up vibrating slightly. Yeah. Kind of looking at Freud. Freud is waiting patiently and politely. Freud is looking too relaxed in front of Bertie. He looks less relaxed, but he looks slightly less relaxed because he's got his hand on his sword. Curie goes ahead and just takes the lead at this point. So it's clear that you all know what those are, I presume. They're, they're bedtime rings, and when they arrive on the table, they indicate that it's time for us all to go sleepy buys. Mm -hmm. No, I've got no idea. Okay, that I believe. She's looking at mainly now at Hamid and Sasha. I've got no interest in them. Um, I don't think I am sure what they represent. From my memory, Bryn says out of character, uh, I don't think Hammond was actually present for all the conversations about Harlequinism on the, on the uh, skyship. Oh, yeah, so he may have picked up a bit of it afterwards, but he doesn't know as much as, uh, say, Zolf and Sasha do. It was just at the captain's dinner, wasn't it? Just after yeah. yeah. Curie then kind of looks around, engages you all, doesn't critically fail her sense motive, which is good, and then effectively goes, right. Suffice it to say, things have gotten quite out of hand here. Now, Grizzop, you were brought in, obviously, to track this person down, not knowing who they were. The reason for this was we didn't want to start to panic, as we've mentioned. And effectively, that still stands. We need someone to go find these people. And as far as I'm aware, you're still the persons we've hired to do this job. Yeah, well, Church of Artemis isn't really uh, gossips, traditionally, so wouldn't have said anything even if we didn't know it was Franz Kafka, which I do now. So... Brilliant. Thanks for wasting that time. Mercenaries are perfectly capable of being discreet, and they're not perfectly capable of doing their jobs well if they don't know the full situation. I mean, I'm literally under a sacred oath. Literally. That's not a metaphor. Just sacred oath to Artemis. To do my job. Sacred oath. Actual oath. Sacred I'm, one. I'm with a god. Nods vigorously. <laughs> I think he's under a sacred oath. <laughs> <laughs> with a god. Not an idea. Actually a god. Big lady, likes bows and arrows. <laughs> so, as it stands, Kafka basically went rogue and we still need that dealing with. The fact that you know it's Kafka, how is that going to change how you track this person down? Well, now I know it's Franz Kafka. Likes and dislikes, appearances, habits, whether, weaknesses. Whether anyone's like, seen him around. If people had seen him around, we'd have already chased him down, wouldn't we? you talk to like everyone she kind of gives a gesture to freud who leans in and goes from your perspective sort of yes are you aware of the school of divination specifically the ability to you know converse with people over great distances Obviously. see things that aren't happening well that's basically why we brought someone in because when kafka left freud gestures to two empty chairs which had the black cloth draped on them he also eliminated two of our number. One of the people that were sadly killed during Kafka's departure from reality was, unfortunately, Codswallop, the uh, head of divination, which has made finding them significantly more difficult, which is why we brought yourself in. We hadn't banked on random elements, Curie kind of gestures to the rest of you, getting involved here. Is that a compliment? I'm going to interpret it that way. <laughs> We know that you're trustworthy, Grizzop, for better or worse, but I can't speak for the rest. I'm if not. you knew the things we'd accomplished over the last few months, you'd know we definitely are. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the details. They're classified. Are they seem all right. True, but we do know that you arrived here very shortly after Paris met with uh, its untimely fate, and just when we had to begin emergency measures in order to ensure our own city did not begin to starve. So you'll forgive us if we are more than cautious regarding yourselves. I mean, it surprises me that a university institution this august has not heard of the difference between coronation and causation, but maybe that's just me thinking aloud. I don't know, hmm? says Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretty 
dick, if you ask me. I mean, blaming people that have fled a war zone. I know. For, for violence that erupts in your own streets with homegrown elements. Wouldn't, wouldn't sort expect of that. Sort of strange. No. That. Very... What civilization would do, do that? Do such a thing. And you terrible. coming out of Paris with all of this armour. I mean, you're obviously very well to do and you're not really in need, are you? There we go. An expat, not an immigrant. Yeah, we are, you see. Yes, of course I'm English, so I'm expat wherever I go. Right. Yes. Curie just kind of takes a moment and you see the, the little tick at the side of the uh, temple has started, that scene too. started <laughs> bouncing again. What do you want? Like, uh, I, what have you got so that we can get on with my job? Again, Curie kind of shares a look with uh, Freud. Einstein's still out of it at this point. Look, do you know what he took? If you've learned this much, you've actually... Yes. Scary book. Yeah. Suffice it to say, yes, scary book. He wasn't originally a scary man. The study of uh, necromancy is not actually a forbidden art here. There's not actually um, a problem with the study of it. The execution of it is a different matter. Ah, um... The tick is slowly working its way down ah, her you should face. Really... I just got that, Thank you. Yeah, that's all right. yeah, isn't it good? You should really get that scene to an aunt of mine had one of those. She snapped, killed hundreds. Curie looks at you, Bertie, and the tick stops. She looks at you. Gives a quick gesture. Give me a fortitude save. Uh, 18. 18? Yep. There is a brief flash of light. In Bertie's seat is a small newt. No armour is there. Nothing else is there. But there is now a newt where Bertie was sat. Well, he was standing for a start. Well, stud. He's still a newt. So, well, right, I so, would um, like to and... roll spellcraft or knowledge arcana. Uh, it'd be spellcraft. Yeah, loads. Um, <laughs> 20, 26? Not that we're getting laissez-faire with our checks here or anything. Um, that was a baleful... Well, Brim knows what happens. Right? I was, presume Hamid does. That was a baleful polymorph. Yeah. What's more, that was possibly the most masterful execution of baleful polymorph you have ever encountered. It was, it was beyond textbook. It was textbook she, she writingly 20, good. <laughs> At which point, Curie... Oh, you just turned into a new. It's fine. It's temporary. Uh, Tw- 28. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Sasha, of course, had her back to Bertie in a defensive position and now has her back to a newt. Of course. And is standing around... Oh, wait, oh. no, no, don't walk backwards, don't walk backwards. Walk forwards. Be careful, don't, um, don't tread on him. Uh, are you... I, I know he, he can be slightly irritating sometimes, but you're going to put him back in a minute, right? Am I fine to continue? Sasha picks up the newt. Uh, uh, yes! So, as it stands... We still need to find Franz Kafka. He is down in the city of Prague, and he currently has one of the tomes from ancient Rome. Yeah. Newt is he's, running over her hands. Oh, he specifically, <laughs> as far as we can tell, intends to enact some kind of ritual using it, which we had hoped to avoid. I mean, he's definitely turning all the plane pits into zombies. We found out that much. Oh, look, dropped him. Oh, no, there you go. That the will most likely be sleeve. a minor side effect. The reason we haven't given you any more information is, frankly, there's nothing more that we can give you. There's not much point giving you a physical description of a man who can probably change his shape at will. We never really looked into it. It's a fairly common ability. So, with that in mind, I'm curious, A, how knowing it was Franz Kafka would really make a difference when you're looking for a rogue mage probably surrounded by the undead at this point. I mean, if I'd known it was a necromancer, instead of going, oh, zombies have turned up, what a terrible accident, I'm going to have gone, oh, that man that I'm looking for, who is a necromancer? Isn't it useful that I know he's a necromancer now? I'm sure my colleague here doesn't mean to uh, criticise your methods. Oh, please. Um, but it is very useful to know the capabilities of one's target on a uh, mission to find them. Please do not turn him back while he is in my shirt sleeve. The news is still very much Freud, in Sasha's shirt sleeve. Freud still stood where he was, sort of gives a look to Curie, who kind of puts her hands up as a, hmm, fine, fine, whatever. Freud sort of picks up the conversation. So what information can we actually give you that would help? Any of his, um, you know, uh, uh, specific weaknesses, likes, plans you might guess that he has. Um, anything that you know about his personality that we can use. Enemies. Any enemies. Friends. Any artefacts you might have to track him. Because if I'm trying to hunt down somebody who can change his look and shape and everything at will, it's going to be really quite hard, isn't it? Well, that's why we got the Artemis lot in. So, as it's standing, here's what here's what I can probably tell you. One, he was he seemed to be possessed by the item that he stole. So most of his personality seems to have been mostly subsumed by that. 
you have been to his study, you'll have seen he was quite a particular man. He was uh, quite clean. He didn't particularly enjoy getting dirty, I'd say that much. Most likely the kind of um, ritual that he'd be wanting to commit would be huge. City spanning. What that means is he's probably going to be moving around the lower city. We can't tell you more than that. Similarly, I doubt he'd go underground by choice, given that he doesn't particularly like it. Other things to bear in mind, he's completely and utterly insane by this point. Um, he wasn't beforehand, but sadly it would appear that his research went quite awry. And as it stands, my best bet would be that if he's going to do some kind of ritual that involves the entire city, the majority of that kind of ritual will be culminated in the centre of the city. Does any of that help you at all? Yeah, that's quite helpful, thank you. <laughs> if only I'd known that a couple of days ago. The but... newt has scurried up onto Sasha's shoulder by this point. Also, <laughs> now that we know who it is, we know that we are probably not capable of taking him on alone, and... We would therefore really appreciate some sort of way to contact you when we do find him. Thank yeah. you. Please. And as an aside, don't you dare try and intimidate the Church of Artemis, all right? Or intimidate me as a representative of the Church of Artemis. You might have your spells and you might have your magic, but I'm dealing with something much bigger than that, okay? So don't Are you talking try it. Freud or Curie Both at that point? Fr Freud looks genuinely hurt. I'd never do anything like that. Curie's kind of like, eh. Freud's still continuing it because Curie's lost her patience a little bit. If you were able to track this person down, we would probably be able to offer you some assistance. In terms of uh, getting in contact with us, um, are you able to cast anything yourself that would be able to serve the purpose? No, I don't think I am, I'm afraid. <laughs> right. Ooh, the patronising. Ooh, the patronising look. Have you got some kind of rock you can talk for or something? <laughs> Pretty much. Um, Brilliant! I'll have, I'll, I'll have two of those, please! I'm... Einstein, he gives he gives Einstein a, gen, a gentle uh, a gentle shake. <laughs> he teleports away instantly. <laughs> he then teleports back. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Right, so what's happening? Um, can you just hook them up with some kind of uh, communication and then we can you know go about our business? Right. Yes. Okay. In my study. Yes. We are, uh, okay. Cool. Yes. We can do that now. Yes. <laughs> teleports again. They both look at each other and go, Yeah, you'll you, you'll get used to it. At which point, Sigmund again. And is there anything else I can do for you before you all head off? Could you turn our friend back in? Wait, to not wait, in the wait, 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 wait. Once we put him on the floor. Reaches for the newt, puts them on the table. Wait there. She doesn't want to be squashed by Bertie <laughs> again. <laughs> Steps back quite a long, unnecessarily far. <laughs> At which point, Curie, again, in a better than textbook execution, dispels the spell upon Bertie. You return exactly as was. You have full memory of everything that happened. You were a newt with newty kind of desires for a little while. But nonetheless, you are now post-newt. Uh, is Bertie wearing his armour? or is he? Uh, yeah, everything would have sort of been transformed with you and then it's been transformed back. As far as it's concerned, you now just have some memories of being a newt. Uh, Bertie... Transformed back with his tongue still out. Yeah, exactly. T <laughs> tongue is literally out lolling. And it, he, it, it's it's slightly longer than it was before. And he used it to clean his eyebrows. <laughs> goes, goes back Some residual effects. Yeah. Residual effects. Can I genuinely... Can Bertie have that as a thing? His now tongue is now slightly too long. See, the problem is, is that would require to have fluffed the polymorph. I don't think that, she did not I don't think she would have fluffed it. I think she might have left that as a reminder. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to wait and see. All see right, how that pans enough. out. Okay. <laughs> so does he have... Has he had... a, a residual slightly long tongue for that I'll allow moment. it for that moment All certainly right. okay. I hope you're aware new now <laughs> <laughs> pretty cool Curie stands gestures for the door Freud steps aside he looks almost apologetic to you Bertie Curie does not Curie does not look particularly phased in any way but they both sort of gesture to the door for you both yeah let's go we tend to turn around and be like one more thing <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bertie draws himself up to his full height, looks dignified, and walks out imperiously. Yep, walks out, follows, follows me, looking around nervously. Actually, uh, th there might be one other thing that's useful. Do you, do you have a map of the ley lines of the city? If there, is, is there, is there, you said it, you know, any culmination to a ritual is likely to take place in the centre. What's in the centre? It's not the opera house by any chance, is it? Curie has already forgotten you. Freud goes, um... Oh, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll have that. I really hope it's the opera. I'll have that sent to you um, at uh, Einstein's study. Same, same question, mass graves. Mm. Um, again, I'll, I'll get the information sent to Einstein's study. Oh, also, another question. Um, now, you mentioned um, that the item that he took uh, may have possessed him. 
Um, Freud has closed the door at this point, so the conversation's between him, because yeah. Fury's not interested. No, fair enough. Um, I wonder, um, do you have a forge uh, around, uh, within walking distance at the university? Forge? A forge. For, for magical purposes, I uh, presume. Magical uh, purposes, uh, yes. Yeah, sure. Excellent, excellent. Can I have directions to it and use of it, please? Uh, uh, yes, feel free. He, he gives you directions to a nearby magical forge. It's mostly used for apprentice work, but it is the nearest. Yeah. Um, but he communicates to his colleagues. My thinking is perhaps hmm, that if a uh, book is capable of possessing a man, hmm, is it not possible that another object in possession of a personality might have some light to shed on the matter of possession? Hmm? No. no not really. It wouldn't work the same. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'm going to the forge anyway. He's going to beat up a sword. Well... Not quite. And we'll take a break there. Huh. Something wrong, Detective. How many tape recorders you got? Can't say I'm entirely sure. We have all sorts of old equipment in storage, I think. You wish to use it for the interviews? Uh, probably not. And you're sure you want to do it in here? We haven't had a chance to properly clean it. Won't take long. If you say so. I warn you, some of my people have a tendency to ramble. I just need to know where he is. As you wish. Who do you want first? Don't care. Right you are. You'll be all right on your own for a minute. <laughs> that a joke? Some people find this place unsettling. Mr Bouchard, I'm not the one who needs to be scared. Whatever you say, Detective. The Magnus Archives, Season 3, coming November 23rd, 2017. See you then. Hard Megxit or Soft Megxit? Have Harry and Meghan misjudged public feeling? And what does their departure mean for the future of the monarchy? With questions mounting, turn to The Telegraph for answers. Subscribe today at telegraph.co.uk. And welcome back. So, where were we heading first? Einstein's study or a magical forge? I to pick a fight with the sword? Same time. Or are you splitting the party? You, I mean, you don't want us to split the party. That's the tone of your voice says, Alex. So, but... splitting the party. There we go. Splitting, <laughs> splitting the party. But he's not really going to have very much to contribute when it comes to the investigative side of things. So he's going to go off and do a little bit of private questioning of his own. Fair enough. In which case, I will stick with the majority first and then jump to you, Bertie. So, sticking with the majority... It wasn't a massive leap of logic, and if you need to ask people, you can. Einstein's study, shocker, was where Kafka's study and where all of the other private yeah. residences are in a large connected building which messes around with extra-dimensional space so that they all basically have their own wings. You head back to it and uh, manage to uh, pass. Again, the university is still seeming to be mobilising itself a little bit. Not massively so, but word probably has spread at this point that some kind of magical shenanigans happened down in Prague and they're starting to get their stuff together um, you continue heading through and head towards the premises and again you are looking at the list of offices in that building can all of you give me another perception check now that you're actually like not in a rush and so on 19 23 16 all of you are also uh, noticing that there is another office which is at the bottom of the list which has a small amount of black tape put over the top of it and it's at the bottom of the list of you have all of the uh, heads of the departments and then one that's blacked out at the is bottom. Is the list alphabetical or is it some random order? Uh, random order. Okay. And you also see that uh, Einstein's study is at the very top of the uh, building. Do you, do you, you head up to the... Yep. 
Yeah. So do uh, is do I see the name of the teacher? Yes, uh, yours is on there as well. So you are referencing specifically Eldarion. And and she is the head of Eldarion is head of illusion. Oh and you see next to Eldarion's name is you know those little slot in things you can have, and it just says in absentia. Oh. But the office is again easily accessible should you wish to go visit that as well. We didn't get. We didn't get the name of the second person who was killed by Kafka. Would you like the list of all of the officers that are there, then? Uh, I, no. I think I've given them once. It doesn't take a massive leap, therefore, that you have uh, Abjuration, the head of Abjuration, dead. Uh, the only name there is Elizabeth, no surname, just Elizabeth. The head of Divination, dead, is Henrietta Codswallop. Right. And then, obviously, you have Necromancy, who's Franz Kafka. Um, they haven't put anything I in see, that so you're slot killing yet. off the female professors. Mm. Mm. Patriarchal. No wonder Curry is so angry. Yeah. Mm. So, heading up to Einstein study? Yep. So you start heading up some stairs, uh, you carry on heading up some stairs, you keep heading up some stairs, you come to the conclusion that you've probably walked out the top of the building at this point, still heading up some stairs, maybe head up some stairs for a bit, round some circular stairs, till eventually you find yourself at the top of what feels like a tower with oh, as it is it. circular and there is a door at the top shocker o o open said door check the traps i just opened said door oh. <laughs> you can do it around me just so. just look to sit, step back and see if anything <laughs> yeah. check by sending someone else through yeah. mcguffin and way <laughs> i'm afraid the grizzop disappears do you check for traps yes <laughs> It would appear that... When you say disappears... Disappears. Just winks out of just existence. Just winks out of existence. As he reaches He reaches door. out, touches the door handle, whoop, disappears. Check the trap. Give me uh, a Hamid grabs the door handle. Disappears. Yeah. 31. <laughs> <laughs> so you rolled a 19, giving a total of... 31. 31, yep. So... You find a device, well, specifically there is a sort of arcane symbol which is on the underside of the doorknob. You've, you've been warned about these before. It's some kind of teleportation device. You touch the doorknob, you get teleported somewhere. <sighs> Touches the doorknob. This pairs. All of you are in the study, literally on the other side of the door. It was the most arbitrary and unnecessary use of a doorknob teleportation ever. There was no reason for it to be there whatsoever. That scans with everything we've seen in <laughs> the he is there, and he appears to be stood over a desk. The desk is covered in crystals, and it, some are glowing, some are fizzing, some are just floating and bouncing around. His hands, he has one on either side of the desk, and he appears to be brooding heavily. His, his shoulders are hunched, and he seems to be breathing slowly and very, very, like... P professor? <laughs> P professor? I'm going to walk up to him and just poke him in the back. What?! Yes, what? We need the stones. Right, talk. yes, okay. And, and good. Professor Freud said he was going to send up a couple of maps. Right, well. yes, yes, okay, okay, sit, sit, sit. Um, there's nowhere to sit. Okay, if you sit, um, bear with me. He starts messing around with some crystals. Just sit on the floor. <laughs> Einstein's there. He's uh, messing around. He picks up some seemingly random crystal and just yells into it, Get in! Get in and get up here now! Dumps it down. There's a uh, delay. Carries on faffing with things. Turns around, realises you're still there. Pretends to be faffing with things. Finally, there's a, uh, a knock at the door. Yes, come on, come on! The door. There's a pop. And Hamid casts invisibility on himself. Someone appears. And they are tall. They are human looking. They are good looking in a kind of... <sighs> rah, rah kind of way. Ah, uh, probably captain of the rowing club. Yes, in fact, like that's a pretty solid guess. Is it Percy? So, <laughs> <laughs> certainly has the uh, physical uh, build of a rower. Yeah. Um, is carrying basically a, a crystal. It's quite quite sizable. Comes in and then uh, goes over and hands it to uh, Einstein. And there you go, uh, sir. Sorry about that. Yes, of course. Right. Why are you here, you... Professor? You told me to come here. You told me to deliver the crystal. Yes. Okay. Right. So what? Take this. He hands him, like, an empty glass, and Gideon, whoever it is, again, just sort of... Okay, Professor. He sort of turns to the rest of you. Okay. Okay, is, is everything okay? 
Yeah, we just want some stones that we can talk through from Einstein and um, oh, uh, a map. It's being brought up. Hamid is invisible. Uh, a, a point around one. <laughs> a map of... Where'd that... Where'd he go? Uh, Is he... Where's Hamid? He just... I don't... I'm... Give me Ooh. perception checks! I mean, we're at like minus 40, aren't we? Or... <laughs> I'm at plus 40. That's it. Uh, 13. 19. 13, 19. Sasha. Mm-hmm. Gideon knows that name. Gideon definitely knows that name and immediately passes it off like he doesn't know that name. Cool, yeah. So anyway, we need maps. Been... He said ley lines for Prague. Mm -hmm. um, right, I'll, I'll go get those uh, for you. He's now kind of looking around quizzically. He just looks a bit weird. Brilliant, he thanks. And heads off and then touches the doorknob. Einstein's there and he just goes, oh, I cannot get the help. Okay, right, so um, this is really simple. It's a sending stone. It's very simple. Okay, you have this one. Right. Okay, I have this one. Okay. Go stand over there. All right. Yeah, I, I, I go and do that. Okay, okay, right. Hold it to your face. Uh, okay. He says to you loudly and clearly, despite the fact that you're in the same room, you're an idiot! There's a brief half lag, <laughs> and then he comes out the crystal loud and clear. You even see a ghost of his face in the crystal. <laughs> idiot! <laughs> I didn't get all of that. All of that. <laughs> right, okay, good. Bring it back. There's a weird speech jamming delay as they do it. Right, okay. So we keep one, you keep one. It's very simple. Wait, no, no, it wasn't good enough. We, we lost half of the message. I only got, like, the last word. Well, you want to give it a second to warm up! He kind of goes around, starts jiggling around with it. He says, right, everyone, close your eyes. Give me a reflex save. Uh? Natural 20. Um, 15. 18. None of you are blinded. There is a <laughs> massive flash of white light which briefly dazzles your eyes despite your eyelids being closed. Okay, try it again. Uh, all right. I'll walk over to the thing. You're an idiot. <laughs> it's loud, clear, and with a crystal clear image at the You're front. An idiot. Seems to work. <laughs> Cut to Bertie. Mm. So, there's all of these youths running around doing things, and you make your way to what would, to anyone else's eye in the modern era, look a bit more like an engineering department. Mm -hmm. It is a bit more functional. It takes a bit of a while to get to because it seems to be moving quicker than the other islands mm -hmm. of, of university. But you manage eventually, it, it coordinates with the one that you're on and you can step on and keep going. It has a lot more steel to it and a lot more sort of wrought iron than the other sort of red brick things. However, this one also has a clearly, utterly impossible architecture to it where it's like one section is held up entirely by a single beam that's about as thick as your finger and things like that. It seems more like people decided to do experiments in architecture whilst building an experimental architecture like area and so on. And there's signs leading to the floor round the back there's of the building. There's a hole down there, right? I wonder how deep it goes. <laughs> 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 heading, heading round to the back, you come upon, yeah, effectively a forge which is tacked onto the back of that building. It has a decent, actually, view of the um, outskirts of, of Prague from there, and it's, it seems to consistently orbit around the outside of the university. Facing outwards. Facing outwards, right. yep. It's almost like occasionally people have accidents. Who knows? Who knows? Whoops. But nonetheless, there is a uh, heavy set. And for the university, very no-nonsense kind of person, hammering away at what looks to be a glowing golden anvil. Golden anvil, lovely. Uh, what does the person look like? Oh, uh, no nonsense. They are about 50. They have a big bushy beard, massive forearms, but are really, really quite short. As in, like, the anvil's far too large for them. Yeah. So they're having to kind of reach their arms up to hammer at the top short. of it. Are they a dwarf? Yes. Okay. They are... Dwarven in stature, you're probably a dwarf given how hefty they are. Look, looks like a dwarf, sounds like a dwarf. Yeah. It's shaped like a dwarf. Yeah, but, but I mean, it's who, one of the blacksmith's job, who are so we? Don't, don't want to don't wanna draw conclusions <laughs> because he's doing a dwarf's job. <laughs> that's that's, that's not a very way. modern way of looking at They're it. They're dwarf presenting. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, cool. Bertie, I see no reason why he's just going to try and approach this person and ask him nicely because he's on official business. They look up at you. Put some glasses on. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Sir right? Bertrand. Oh, hello. All right. I am Sir Bertrand McGuffigan, and who do I have the pleasure of addressing? Storm Scout. Storm Scout. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Storm Scout. And yourself? Off his hand for a handshake. Big sturdy man handshake. That is a good handshake. If you've ever seen Predator, that bit where they just arbitrarily show biceps for an extended period. Sure. There's, there's a moment where Bertie and Storm Scout. Oh yes. Bertie and Storm Scout just do that. They lock hands, and it's it's not Ooh. it's not like um, a, a sort of a, a macho trump off. Like there's not the sort of like. The, no, no, the, no, the, no. It's it's a it's a two firm handshakes, well met. Yeah. It's a handshake that say we respect each other. Yes. We we could. 
arm wrestle. But we're not going to. We're not going to. But we're not going to. That would be a good show, and we both. Come on, guys! Sun's out, guns, guns out. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we're we're both packing howitzers. So let's, <laughs> let's calm it in the interest of so, something friendly fire. So to wrap it up, you shake hands. You shake hands. I think <laughs> a moment of understanding passes between us that transcends mere words. Um, and Thank goodness we didn't spend lots of words <laughs> transcending that. <laughs> discussing that. Discussing that transcendence. Moving on from the handshake. Storm Skull understands perfectly well that that is unofficial business and just lets him pass and use the forge. <laughs> Does Looks like James is jamming now, so. He, that, he wants to wrap this up. <laughs> the quicker we get this bit done, the quicker I get back to the party. <laughs> so, anywho, what can I do for you? But I'm on official university business. I have a sword here that I need to have over examined, perhaps. May I? You certainly may. He passes him. So Holds it up. You hear. I say here. You see him kind of cock an ear. And then he kind of winces a bit. Winces a bit more. Yes. Puts it down. That's okay, what I yeah. I, yeah. Can, I can see the problem there. Mm. Mm. So, now. Nah. <laughs> he clearly knows the problem is Bertie. <laughs> <laughs> does, he, does he clearly know the problem is Bertie? You can give me a sense motive. 15. 15? You can't gauge it. You can't gauge it. You don't think he's deliberately like putting one over you, mm. but you can't really get a read on him. He seems quite a uh, reserved character. Inscrutable, yeah. Right. Um, okay. Well, you see, this uh, recently uh, came into my hands, a family heirloom, and I noticed that there is a certain a certain disturbance to it. There's a sort of irritating high-pitched sound that comes with the handling, and I'm wondering if there's anything that can be done about it. Mm, not really. Again, he sort of goes, takes a moment, Puts a, a big leather glove on that he was using, touches the sword, takes the glove back off and just doesn't engage with the sword and just turns to you. Honestly, it doesn't doesn't really work like that. For what it's worth, I mean, if if you're looking to sell it, we'd be more than happy to buy that. I mean, it's an incredibly like valuable and well-made item. It's I'm not entirely it's... sure. Like a lot of people consider, you know, an ego in a weapon of this to be a, a bonus. I don't don't fancy the competition, frankly. <laughs> Well, I mean, you do have to sort of work with it, not against it. There's a, there is a knack You're to it. You're not really my style. No, really? fair, fair. Well, I mean, I can see about the university purchasing it off you for uh, training purposes for the rest of the apprentices, if you want. How much might we be considering as the value for this item? For insurance purposes, of course. And Bertie puts his hand directly on when he says, for insurance purposes, of course. He puts his hand on the pommel and then takes it off again at the end of that sentence. Let's roll an appraise check. Oh, he's very good. Very good he's very good at appraising, right. as he should be, yeah. admittedly. He kind of looks at you. It was a 19. He looks at you. I'll tell you what it's worth, but I'll also tell you what we'll offer. Mm. If you met a mug who'd pay that market value, I reckon you'd get 18k for that. We'll give you 12. And, um... And what, what would you do with this uh, sword for training purposes? Would you be, and at this point Bertie gets down and touches the palm of the sword again, would you be, you know, smashing it around against, you know, uh, planks of wood? Would it be ineptly handled by ill-experienced trainees who had no conception of the quality of weapon they were wielding, who might perhaps chop fruit with it, hmm? Who would, you know, drop it around in sewers? Treated with all sorts of disrespect, or and Bertie takes his hand off it again. There was no words that time. Right. Okay. Um, honestly, it's mostly going to be used as a showpiece. We'll show them how to do it, but you wouldn't destroy something like this. That'd be a bit of a waste. Bertie rolled his eyes. So, thinking <laughs> about how much sewage you've encountered in the adventure so far, <laughs> how much sewage the sword might encounter. As a university showpiece, and weighing the two up. He's trying to he's trying to show the sword to his boss essentially, and lay out an alternative uh, path that might happen. So far, I think he may have established that it may spend the rest of its days on a velvet cushion, being cared for by experts. Now, if I were to pay you some money, could you <laughs> torture this sword for as long as the university exists? He kind of takes a moment, looks left, looks right. There's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much money? Tell you what, 5k and you won't be able to use that as a sword again. <laughs> Bertie touches the sword. 5k. Can you, looking, looking back through what I have, you know that? That seems like quite a fair deal. Bertie removes his finger once again. 
Still no words from the sword. What'd you say? I mean, I shouldn't really be doing this, but again, he's looking left, looking right. One time offer. Could this one time offer be picked up again in about half an hour or so? And Bertie's eyes look to the forge. Takes a moment. 6k I can get it done in 10 minutes. Bertie touches the pommel of the sword again. 6k. 6k. I'm going to cut back to Einstein's study at this point. So, um. Has Hamid reappeared yet? Hamid. How long is the duration on your invisibility? Uh, five minutes. Yes, Hamid will have reappeared. There's another knock, knock, knock at the door. Hamid casts invisibility <laughs> on himself. Gideon again <laughs> immediately reappears. Is he? Is he like? Is he maybe um, teleporting somewhere? Gideon is there holding like two big old parchments. They look particularly large as well. Like these aren't intended for like carrying uh, ha around. Hamid will quickly whisper. I'm still here. Just don't say anything. What? Uh, Gideon comes over and he's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear anything? No. All right. Gideon comes over and then uh, dumps the um, dumps the parchments on the uh, on one of the tables in the room, which I haven't actually described yet. I'll do so now. The room itself is a large. It has an almost observatory quality. A large glass ceiling. It has bay windows on a lot of sides, and it is significantly larger in terms of width than it should be, given how high up it is, given how precarious it should be. It feels quite spacious. It's like someone took a lighthouse top and kind of stretched it. I'm just thinking of the room they kept Tom Baker in for Fort Boyard, which is a very niche reference. <laughs> I, you know what? As far as niche references go, that's actually the source I was using. <laughs> I'm not actually joking. What either. have you got there? We've got a crazy old man who does riddles at us. <laughs> Occasionally we give him some food, have a chat. <laughs> it's basically that. That's such a niche reference. It'll never make it to the main cut. But you're right. You're absolutely right. And I want, I want everyone who's a Patreon to know that you're right. <laughs> so, anywho, yeah, Gideon uh, starts stretching them out and keeps looking around surreptitiously, but again, there's no one there. Right, um, so, uh, pr 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 Professor? What? Why are you here? What do you want? The maps... We, we'll skip the whole rigmarole of explaining why he's here does again. Does it take more than five minutes? It does not. Oh. <laughs> How many minutes does it take? Because we could <laughs> draw this out longer. So, the two maps are stretched out on the table. They are held down basically with random lumps of crystal around the outside to stop them rolling in on themselves. Uh, Einstein starts having a look, and now that he's actually got a job, he does seem to start be focusing in. Gideon, meanwhile, starts sort of casting his eyes around and not really paying attention. Einstein starts, okay, so you're asking about the, um, the ley lines, yes? Yeah. Okay, good, right, so you look at the map, there's Prague, yada yada yada. Okay, you see this line, shock, it's a ley line, yes? Uh, this line's a ley line, yes? Okay, right, you'll notice that it's slightly off-center, it's because um, after the burning, really, Prague kind of shifted, yeah, so I long think, story short. I got it, they, we had it. Our colleague Where's was it? supposed to yeah. be here to uh, un understand this. Uh, but Do you know where Hamid is? He's, uh, yeah, Hamid's like uh, teleported or something. Okay, one second. Um, uh, um... What is a ley line? He then suddenly sort of hesitates, mutters something Hammond, under the ground. Hammond has stepped, as well as mirror, Hammond has stepped just outside the room. That's fine. Uh, Einstein sort of gives a gesture, then waves his hands, and there's a, a peculiar dazzle of light around his eyes. He looks around. Well, he's definitely not in here. Okay? Well, we'll have to wait for him to come back. Yeah, like, I mean, we, I don't... we can't. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Show us the plague pits, though. That's useful. That's yeah. okay. Okay, fine. Um, I hate you guys. I really hate you guys. <laughs> Training. Knowledge local. <laughs> well, let's look at some maps. <laughs> I'm gonna jump back to Bertie. Um, Listen, so, so I mean, are we doing this or not? Because you know, I've got a class coming in about 15 minutes. So oh, that's all I'll need. Mm -hmm. One moment. Holds his hand out. Okay. Thank you. And Bertie uh, goes over to the uh, goes over to the forge and uh, puts on takes the sword and has it in such a position that he would be able to communicate with the sword. Mm -hmm. Now, can you leave me in there? There's, mm. there's no response. Bertie taps it against the side of the furnace. Can you in? Still nothing. Taps it again harder. Still nothing. Bertie opens the furnace door. Can you hear me? I've dealt with worse than you. You're opening such a can of worms. Now, if I was to open a can of worms, I would use an effective and useful tool, like a tin opener. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a moment, that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Retroactive intimidating, check passed. 
Listen, I can be your friend, or I can be your enemy, but either way, I'm going to help you. I don't take instructions from Cadre. Hmm? Bertie takes the sword and lays <laughs> the tip of the sword into the white hot furnace. It proceeds to start glowing. Hello? There's, there's not really any communication. Storm's guard from a bit further back goes, it's not really how it works. Um, right! How <laughs> can I torture this sword? You, you pay me the money, and then I, I do. I don't. We discussed this. You pay me the money, and then I Fine. do the thing. Fine. All right. How much for some enhanced interrogation for the next fifteen minutes, half an hour? Basically, I, can, I want this sword broken. I can do it myself, or I can pay you a small amount of money to do it. Right. Okay. I, like I said, give me six k. It cannot be a sword. For three k, I'll. What sword for breaking its legs? Um. I t- tell you what, give me 1k and uh, it'll be more compliant. There you go. There you go, done. Will it suffer? Oh yeah, Lord. Good, excellent, right, 1k it is. There you are, Bertie counts that out. Um, Bertie, while he's while he's doing this counting out, he's still got his hand on the sword. Does he use the platinum? Or the fake platinum? Or the real money? Um, How much real money does he have? He's got enough real money right. to do that. He's not trying to fake it. He's not trying to fake it for fake ah. money. The fake money has been the charm. Oh, right. So, do you pay the man? Uh, he's, Bertie is in the process of counting this money out mm-hmm. to him while he's got the hand on the sword mm-hmm. now. One, two hundred. <laughs> and I'm going to cut back to Einstein's study. Specifically, Gideon starts backing away going, so um, obviously you've got everything still looking around kind of sketchily. Um, if there's anything I can do for you, Professor Einstein's like, yes, of course, yes, tea! Mm! And then Gideon just kind of heads out and touches the door handle to teleport outside. Where's Hamid? Uh, he's, he's just stepped to one side of the door. Gideon appears directly in front of you, isn't looking at you, looks around and is nose to nose with you. I, without touching him, he's not nose to nose with me, I'm a half one. Without touching him, True. still invisible, I reach behind him and touch the door handle. Gideon, the last thing you see is Gideon looking a bit worried, then starting down the stairs. Your invisibility wears off. Back in the study. Oh, Hamid, we were waiting. Yeah, where did you go? <laughs> yeah, that is. You about ley lines. Yeah, and you just, oh, good. You, you, I had to use the facilities. What? what, um, what I get, shall what, we resume? What, I'm terribly sorry. What's a lame stomach trouble? Yeah, what? Um, Bertie, give me a will save. Oh, five. Bertie walks in the top of the tower and sheaths his sword. Oh, we've seen this before. <laughs> and I think I'll end the episode there. <laughs> cool. I'm sure everything's fine. Right. Everything's right. probably fine. It's all, right. it's all it's probably fine. I'm not particularly attached to this character. I don't like it very much. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 you're the one that's got the writing job if it all yeah. goes. You think I write this? Um, all I do is I basically lay out a bunch of dominoes and keep trying to stop you knocking the first one over until the last one's down. It never works. Yeah. <laughs> it never works. But anyhow, we'll uh, come back next time and... Uh, We'll, we'll see how I'll this pans out. I'll continue to avoid my awkward backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Rusty Quill Gaming is a podcast distributed by RustyQuill.com and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International License. Today's episode was recorded and produced by Alexander J. Newell. To comment on episodes, make donations, and view links, images, videos, and show notes, visit rustyquill.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Visit us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter at the Rusty Quill, or email us at mail at rustyquill.com. Thanks for listening. I'm in a shipping container in Romania about to be questioned about what I know by oh, people God. with diplomatic deniability. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. That's our other podcast. Is our other... <laughs> <laughs> diplomatic immunity. What a chat show that would be. <laughs> diplomatic immunity. <laughs> Grill. <bite>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go on. <laughs> what is your favourite thing about working with <laughs> other actors and or directors? I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you anything. <laughs> I really enjoy working with Roger Moore! <laughs> He's such a perfect gentleman on set! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Are we, we going to sell them to this? Are we going to sell a rusty core yes. bumper sticker which says my other podcast is classified? <laughs> my other podcast is outlawed by the Geneva Convention, but... 